Bad news for Witcher fans. Henry Cavill is out of the role of Geralt. The only Witcher super fan that was a part of the production, it seems. The only one who was able to chime in and say, hey, maybe let's fix this or fix that to make that more accurate. He's gone. And uh, Liam Hemsworth is taking over. Let's just go ahead and dive into today's video. Now, before I really dive in, I found this tweet was just so perfectly illustrated. And it says, imagine making such a terrible show that a giant fanboy like Cavill will willingly give up on playing one of his favorite characters, which is so... It just makes this hit so much harder because it's like, imagine th that... Comparing that to something like, that would be like me being a part of a Tomb Raider production and quitting to, to work on something else. Because, and Tomb Raider is my favorite franchise of all time in all entertainment properties. So, yeah, that is saying a lot. Now, obviously, it seems like this is most likely because Henry Cavill will be reprising his role as Superman, and there's probably some co conflicts there. But still, he's picking Superman over this. I'm sure it pays better, too, but still. All right, let's go ahead and dive into the article. So, this is, uh, it says, The Witcher Renewed for Season 4 by Netflix. Liam Hemsworth to replace Henry Cavill as Geralt of Rivia. Now, I made a, a video recently, too, which you guys can find in my recent uploads, talking about how, um, you know, people who have even worked on The Witcher Netflix TV show have allegedly said that a lot of the writers or some of the writers don't even like the source material and they make fun of it. So... Geralt was really that only shining light for Witcher fans to just be like, hey, at least we got a super fan here working on it, a big role in it, the main role in it, and he's able to give his input, but now he's gone. Netflix says The Witcher will officially be returning for a fourth season, but it will be doing so with a new Geralt of Rivia as Liam Hemsworth will be replacing Henry Cavill after season three. Netflix shared the news alongside quotes from both Cavill and Hemsworth. My journey as Geralt of Rivia has been filled with both monsters and adventures, and alas, I will be laying down my medallion and my swords for season four, Cavill said. In my stead, the fantastic Mr. Liam Hemsworth will be taking up the mantle of the White Wolf. As with the greatest of literary characters, I pass the torch with reverence for the time spent embodying Geralt and enthusiasm to see Liam's take on this most fascinating and nuanced of men. Liam, good sir, this character has such a wonderful depth to him. Enjoy diving in and seeing what you can find. Okay, that was nice. Uh, then Liam says, as a Witcher fan, I'm over the moon about the opportunity to play Geralt of Rivia. Well, let's hope he really is a Witcher fan. And that he's able to, you know, chime in and, like Henry Cavill did. Uh, him, uh, Hemsworth said, Henry Cavill has been an incredible Geralt. And I'm honored that he's handing me the reins and allowing me to take up the White Wolf's blades for the next chapter of his adventure. Henry, I've been a fan of yours for years and was inspired by what you brought to this beloved character. I may have some big boots to fill, but I'm truly excited to be stepping into the Witcher world. He's right, he definitely has some big boots to fill. You know, no offense to Chris Hemsworth, but there's just no freaking way he's going to be able to deliver like Henry Cavill did. He was the only, in my opinion, he was the only good part about this Netflix Witcher TV show. It, it, it bored me to tears. I didn't even make it to season two. It's just, I don't know, I just couldn't get into it. Now, I know, like, that first episode, that fight scene was pretty cool. But, yeah, I just could not, I, I found it, pretty boring personally but that's just me all right so Liam's him Liam Hemsworth brother of Chris Hemsworth as we know blah 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 um I feel like yeah the Witcher fans in general have been getting some bad news lately I know CD Projekt Red they mentioned something about or there was some sort of press release or some sort of news about them incorporating some 
policies or practices with uh, their company that kind of involves some that kind of you know seems like it's going to be like woke policing almost now i i haven't dived enough into this i've just seen people recommending it in my comments so i'm not going to go too far into that but yeah let me kind of segue this though into this recent announcement of the witcher remake and that says cd project red announces the witcher remake says it will be a modern reimagining these dogs are fighting are not fighting they're playing <laughs> Puppies, come here, come here. <laughs> All right. So anyway, yeah. And you know, I've I made a video about this as well. That whole modern reimagining or updated for a modern audience. That is the worst thing a fan of something wants to hear when it comes to a remake or a continuation or anything. Those dreaded words. Uh, so. CD Projekt Red has announced a remake of the first entry in the Witcher series, boasting the upcoming title as a modern reimagining, okay, of the original and revealing that it will be built from the ground up, okay? I mean, that's kind of neat. Build it completely from the ground up. It could uh, be visually even better. All right, first revealed in the developer strategy update earlier this month under the code name Kenis Majoris, The Witcher remake promises to be a modern reimagining of the 2007 game as part of its 15th anniversary. Must be freaking nice so to get some anniversary con content updated because as a Tomb Raider fan, man, we're hungry. Granted, if this is going to be a woke wash of a uh, version of the remake, then yeah, this is going to be worse than good. So I can't really talk too much because I know what, like what's going on with Tomb Raider and stuff. Um, that's been more bad than good. So I, I guess nothing is better than something bad. All right. So based on the fantasy novels by Andres. <laughs> I tried to say this last time. Uh, Sapkowski. The Witcher tells the story of Geralt of Rivia. Raised as a Witcher from a young age, Geralt offers his services as a monster hunter as he pursues those who have obtained School of the Wolves mutagens to make more Witchers. Players are faced with the decisions that can affect the lives of many and alliances that are not made lightly. Okay, so boasting a ground-up remake with Unreal 5 engine technology, the game will also use the same tool set CD Projekt Red will employ for the new Witcher trilogy. Announced earlier this year, currently the remake is only in its early stages of development under Fool's Theory, who had previously supported development of Outriders, Baldur's Gate 3, Divinity Original Sin 2, and their own game, 7. Okay, now, I will say, like, The Witcher 3, freaking phenomenal, but a near-perfect game, in my opinion. So, if they are taking that approach for remaking the first game with the experience that they've gotten by continuing the series and have delivered a near perfect experience with the witcher 3 uh, then yeah that sounds great but it is always scary to hear the words modern reimagining <laughs> it's in fans us fans of properties of games of movies of anything else we we do not like those dreaded words so, um, The Witcher is where it all started for us. For CD Projekt Red, head of studio Adam Badowski stated in a press release, it was the first game we ever made, ever, and it was a big moment for us then. Going back to this place and remaking the game for the next generation of gamers to experience it feels just as big, if not bigger. Uh, Badowski explains collaborating with Full Theory on the project is just as exciting as some of the people there have been previously involved in the Witcher games. The studio's team boasts veteran developers who had worked on The Witcher 2, Assassins of Kings, and The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. Even so, CD Projekt Red has stated their team is providing full creative supervision. Okay, that's good. They know the source material well. They know how much gamers have been looking 
looking forward to seeing the remake happen and they know how to make incredible and ambitious games, Badowski reassures. And although it will take some time before we're ready to share more about and from the game, I know it'll be worth the wait. Fool's Theory CEO Jacob Rakaz also offered his thoughts, declaring, I am very happy that my professional paths have crossed again with fellow developers from the time of working together on The Witcher 2 and The Witcher 3, especially when it's a remake of a project that is so close to our hearts. We are excited to join forces with CD Projekt Red, and our goal is to give players another great game from the iconic Witcher series, Rokaz concluded. Now, I, I mean, the team... Uh, CD Projekt Red are very talented, very amazing. Uh, so, while these words are very scary, modern reimagining, and some of their more new implemented office practices that they announced um, may be kind of scary, given everything we've seen in the gaming industry and how a lot of our favorite games have been woke washed and completely transformed yeah it's scary to see all this stuff but one thing that i can say for certain is that cd project red is an extremely capable talented studio so uh i think it is a little bit too soon to be outraged uh even though we're hearing modern reimagining let's hope they're talking about modern as in better graphics, better technology since the original Witcher game dropped, you know? So, hey, uh, it's it's too soon for me to really knock on that just yet. But anyway, that's that for today's video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'll catch you next time. And in the meantime, go boom. <laughs>